Jenny. 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 <laughs> Deborah. Tage. But now it's time to face the dragons in the flesh. Dragoni, veniamo per voi e abbiamo un'idea meravigliosa per condividere. And I'm not entirely sure what he said, but I echo that sentiment. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alex Somerville, and this is my co-founder, Johnny Prin. Together, we're the founders of One Third Stories. We're here today looking for £60,000 of investment in return for 7.5% equity in the company. Like millions of children across the UK, I absolutely hated learning another language. That's why we started writing stories that start in English and end in a different language. We do this through our clockwork methodology that allows us to gradually introduce words in the foreign language into easy to understand context. So an example for Spanish might be Alex and Johnny walked into the den of five scary, fire-breathing dragones. <laughs> the meaning is instantly understandable and our stories use this methodology to introduce individual words that build into phrases, sentences and eventually entire pages in the foreign language. We created our first set of books off the back of a successful crowdfunding campaign. Since then, we've partnered with the Goethe Institute and the Spanish Embassy, as well as receiving investment from the University of Nottingham. With their support, we launched a subscription box service. We've already generated over £19,000 in the last four months. We believe that One Third Stories represents a fantastic investment opportunity. You can help to give the gift of languages to kids everywhere and help to bring children and their parents together over a good, old-fashioned storybook. We hope you've enjoyed the pitch. We'll grab some books and we'll take any questions. An educated offering from Alex Somerville and Johnny Prin. They're looking for £60,000 for 7.5% of their children's books that drop foreign language into stories written in English. Thank you. Peter Jones is wondering who the tales are targeted at. Are these books for parents to read to their children? So the way that we've designed the books are so that they can be used individually by the children or in tandem with a parent or teacher that doesn't actually speak the foreign language. But I get to words like um, Leon Gatto. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that? Um, so that's lion and cat. And how do I know that I've pronounced it correctly? Because I oh, So one haven't. of the first things we do is that whenever you order a book or a subscription, even before it arrives, we send out an audio book. So I'm a subscriber? Yes. What, what, tell me my journey. What um, do I do? OK, you'll sign up, uh, you'll get an email. And in that email is the audio book. A few days after that, your book arrives. Then there's an activity book. And this is all in the same pack? All yes. in the same pack. And okay. all of these things are themed around the story. OK, so talk me through your subscription models. On a monthly rolling basis, um, you'll be paying £14.99 plus postage and packaging, which is £2.95. Um, if you sign up for three months, then you'll pay £13.99 per month. And with um, a six month, you'll pay um, £12.49. And what are your costs associated to that? The cost element is £5. And it's something that we're printing right here in the UK. Once we move abroad, whether it's to Malta or Turkey or China, that will go down to under a pound in total once we get to around 10,000 boxes going out each month. Plans to cut costs by printing overseas are revealed by the entrepreneurs. But dad of five, Peter Jones, wants to know how many who sign up for the books come back for more once they've tried them. So how many customers have you got on a one-month subscription? Um, roughly around 60. And how many repeated? Um, all but 15. Right, so you have 45 customers. Yes. Why did those people in the first month, why did they leave you? Um, so the vast majority of people were from their kids being of a too young age group and actually saying, you know, it's not quite age appropriate at this stage. So it was more around the messaging and on, on the site maybe. OK, and then how are you going to make your messaging clearer? At the moment, we're experimenting a lot on the website, looking at the ads and the way those are messaged. So far, we've tried out a variety of different images and messages that we're using to advertise. And what was the result? Uh, to be honest, at the moment, I think we're still finding the exact result. We have definitely improved our kind of conversion funnel. What's the conversion funnel from the web? At the moment, yeah. it's just under a percentage, so it's something we're not happy with at the so moment. So you're under 1% on conversion? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That is awful, guys. I could do nothing on the web, literally nothing, and get 1% traction. 
I think I could just put a, a tiny little ad and do nothing and I'll have conversion of 1%. Failure to attract and keep a big customer base proves a problem for Peter Jones. And Tuka Suleiman wants to know how they've managed to bankroll the business so far. Alex and Johnny. Yes. So you've had some funding already. Um, so we had £40,000 in revenue from um, the crowdfunding campaign. Yep. Um, we've received £30,000 from Nottingham University. We also got a £10,000 loan. So in total, you, you raised £140,000? Um, it's a bit more. So I think it's probably closer to £200,000 Two, now okay. with um, the crowdfunding. OK, £200,000. Yeah. Yep. How much you got left? We've got £150,000 in the bank at the moment. Yeah. You've got £150,000 in the bank? Yes. Um, and why are you here? We're here because having a dragon on board just gives us, A, a lot more credibility. It gives us a superstar investor to have in the business and also just opens up so many more doors in terms of contacts, PR. Guys, you've got £150,000 in the bank. You could do that without a dragon. Do you honestly believe that a dragon who is going to add value to your business and advise you and guide you and open doors for you is going to invest 60,000 for seven and a half percent? I think there's definitely a huge amount of value from the kind of investors sitting in this room. Okay, so what are you offering um, a dragon? We would um, be offering you to invest um, 60,000 pounds and also we'd like to offer you advisory shares. What's an advisory share? Um, so it means that basically we would um, take you on board and you would be a, a member of the team and dedicate a couple of hours a month to advising us and we would give you shares in return for that. If you think for one second I'm going to be signed up to working for you, that's like a job. People get an awful lot more than that at some times in my life and at other times they're getting on and carrying on and running their businesses. So that really doesn't appeal. I'm out. Deborah Meaden refuses to put her name on the business's rota and exits the deal. But is Jenny Campbell prepared to find the time to help the entrepreneurs nurture their fledgling business? Your enthusiasm is wonderful. I don't hear you talking about, you know, we want to drive a business that will deliver this, this X sales, Y profit and make a difference. You started the other way around. We want kids to learn languages. Yes, we all want to do that. You need to take a pause now and look at where you are and say, this is not working yet before you go out with more languages and different marketing strategies, because that feels like spray and pray to me, and you need to pray at the moment, and just take a step back uh, and think about where you can start monetizing this business and making it interesting for an investor. I think, fr from our perspective anyway, we see um, what similar subscription boxes for just activities are doing. We all see subscription boxes and we all get excited about it. So it feels like you're jumping on the bandwagon a little bit. We're back to this spray and pray marketing. So for that reason, it's not an investment for me. I'm out. Thank you. Guys, I mean, you've definitely proven that you can raise money. The problem is you've made it impossible to invest. The valuation is definitely out. And, and you, you want to give me advisory shares. Uh, if, if I wanted advisory shares, I could go to 100 companies without investing. There's no carrot there. I'm not going to be there for the rest of your journey. I'm out. No fairy tale ending from Tuka Suleiman, who becomes the third dragon the entrepreneurs fail to tame. And now their stories are out of the hat, Tej Lalvani has some concerns of a potential copycat. What if um, somebody else comes up with a similar book in terms of teaching languages? The main thing for us is really around not divulging too much around what we're actually doing and really assemble a team of experts around language learning that no one else can do. So what you're saying is that because it's easily copyable that you don't want to market it and let people know about it? Not that we don't want to market it, but that we don't want to kind of let on too much about the actual process behind the scenes. I can't agree with that model because 
If you want something to do well, you've got to let everyone know about it. You've got to advertise it. You've got to create the awareness. I'm not going to be investing today. I'm out. Tej Lalvani becomes the fourth dragon to say, non merci, leaving the final chapter of the entrepreneur's journey into the den in the hands of a previously scathing Peter Jones. Guys, I, I got to the, the halfway line here and I was struggling with this. Um, and I had to go back and reread it. And then I realised somebody that's partially dyslexic is not going to actually do very well anyway um, trying to get through this book. But I think you've got a chance here. I think that you have an opportunity with the passion that you have to do something quite good. Um, and it is, a, it is a, a real small seed of a chance. But you have made it very difficult because you've very clearly preset evaluation. Um, but I'm going to make it really difficult for you now. I'm going to offer you all of the money but I want 20% of the business. That was a big sigh. <laughs> wow. that's, that's an interesting offer, um, Peter, and quite unexpected. Could we have a, have a moment? Have Absolutely, a yes. A twist in the tale as Peter Jones comes up with a surprise offer. <laughs> I mean, it'd be great to have him on board. He's putting up the whole £60,000, but wants 20% of the company, almost three times what the entrepreneurs wanted to part with. Thank you for your offer, Peter. I think we're aware that we're going to need to raise again, and quite possibly again after that. And I don't think we can afford to give away a further 20% of equity in our business at this stage. Is, is there any room for movement at all? I think you're about to make a very big mistake. Because any future fundraise, if I want to maintain my 20%, you've already got somebody that can afford to put the money in. So I, <laughs> you're not going to have to dilute. So I think, guys, you you need to be a little bit less greedy and start sharing. That's my feeling. It's naive, not greedy. <laughs> it is, guys, honestly. Well... But you've got to make that decision for yourself. Well, Peter, it is a fantastic offer. But I think for us, um, we really believe in this. We believe we're going to need more money down the road to do it as well. And we can't accept an offer for 20% equity. But thank you for it. It's very encouraging for us. What would you accept? I think, to be honest, we'd be hard pressed to go anywhere above the kind of the offer we came in with. I think it's way too much. I, th I think it's not, I don't, we, we don't see it as greedy from our behalf. I think we yeah, know but your that way gonna... too much is, is stupid. Your level of negotiation is 7.5% or nothing. I've offered you 20 and you're not even going to come back? Really? We really think that it's a fair valuation. So the answer's no then, you're not? The answer's no with regret. Well then, it's Ali Verderci, ich bin aus. Grazie. Thank you. Please. Adios, amigos. Thank you. Thank you very much. One for the books, as the entrepreneurs refuse to budge on their equity stake. They leave the den empty handed. 20% is too high. 20% is too high. Like, that was wrong. Yeah, we couldn't have taken that. Ich kann nicht verstanden. So the next book is The Great Big Mistake. 